Hey guys, my name is April from Unsolicited Plant Talks and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to put a moss pole together. Since I have posted that video of moss pole, uh, I know many of you guys were very interested in how to make it. And uh, many of you guys actually even requested and emailed us about it. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that today. There's gonna be some things that I'm gonna do a little bit different. So let's go ahead and put this thing together. So first things first, make sure you gather all of your supplies. What supplies I have is I got my moss pole right here. I got shears because we're going to be making cuttings. I have my medium, the medium that I'm going to be using. So I actually have, this time around, I'm going to be using some cocoa core, cocoa husk mix. And then I'm going to top it off with some uh, sphagnum moss so that it stays moist a little longer, but also um, it won't hold too, too much moisture in the long run. So those two, I also have this uh, powder that I use as a rooting hormone. If you saw this from a previous video, like I said, I don't really have anything specific that I use. I just use whatever I find on Amazon that comes in a big bottle. This is gonna be linked down below. So if you guys are interested, it'll be right there. Pins, just in case I need some pins, but this is optional. You don't have to have these, but if there are cuttings that are gonna be a little bit harder to maneuver or harder to keep in place, then this is going to be useful. So I grab that too and cuttings. And remember I mentioned that it's always good to pre-plan what kind of cuttings and what kind of plants you're going to be growing because it will make a big difference later on. So let's go ahead and get our cuttings. It is very important to pre-plan what plants you're going to be putting or what cuttings you're going to be putting in your moss pool, especially if you're not just growing one type. If you're growing multiple, you want to keep in mind how fast they grow, how big they're going to get how much roots they actually produce because later on they're going to make a big difference when it comes to growing them in long term especially if you put plants that grow big roots because they're big leafers and they they need a lot more nutrients than others then they're going to suck all of the nutrients and all of the water and moisture from your moss pole before everything else can so that's something to keep in mind so let's go ahead and look in this greenhouse i decided that i'm going to grow a moss pole in the Sprite Greenhouse. So what I would like to put in the moss pole are the plants that actually grow bright leaves or change in colors. So yeah, so let's go ahead and look around what I can put in my moss. So although these ones are really pretty and really cute, this is Koya Paula GN001. Look at these really cute flowers right here. All of these are really cute. I think it's gonna be, these guys grow really fast. I don't really wanna use these because they're gonna grow really big on my moss pole and I really don't want to up pot or grow these big big ones along with the other ones unless I just grow this by itself I think it's going to look really cute so let's go ahead and look for something small-ish this is also really pretty but let's go look for something small-ish these guys okay this is VL9 this is in the Sigillatus family this grows much faster than Hoya GPS 7240 I think I'm gonna get one of those. I think that's gonna be a really good addition. So we'll cut one of those from the mother plant. All right, so here's the mama plant of the VL9. As you can tell right here, she's flowering and she's looking gorge. So we're gonna cut from here because I don't wanna cut those. Those ones are for sale on our website. So if you're interested, we should have them on the website. You can go ahead and pick one up for yourself. Look how freaking cute this is. I think it's gonna look really good. So we'll go ahead and make some cuts from this one. And yeah, here are some more sigillatus. This is a round leaf splash. They're so freaking beautiful. Look at that one. Oh my gosh, but I think, oh, what if we do a sigillatus moss bowl? I'll think about it, maybe later on. I want varieties but look at her she's so pretty here are some really cute ones too these are hoya fichii the flower is orange really cute but also an extremely fast grower however though the leaves don't seem to get too much more big than this one maybe i'll put fichii but i'm leaning towards just having small leaf hoyas again okay that's on the table 
This is one of my freaking favorites. This is Hoyas partioides, such cool plants. These are all grown from seeds here at UPT. And what these are, if you've never heard of them, oh my gosh, they're so unique. So these leaves usually only grow whenever you grow them from seed or whenever you propagate them without any roots yet. Sometimes they grow leaves first so they can photosynthesize. And then after that, they just grow these long peduncles right here. They're all peduncles. So every single one of these, so that's the stem right there. And all of these are all peduncles and every single one of these actually grow flowers that typically only open at night. So definitely going to put one of these. So let's go ahead and look for a small one. How about this one? This one's cute. Oh. Okay, we're gonna start with this guy. Another thing to keep in mind is you have to make sure that they're all requiring about the same care because if you put something that doesn't like bright light along with the ones that you want to grow in bright light or bright environment, they're not going to be very happy with you. Here's another favorite of mine. This is Lachinosa Black Long Leaves. So this is not the same as the Croniana in the market. Look at those new leaves. Look how dark those are. So I really like growing them in bright light because the color of the older leaves don't really turn into dark green. So this is all a preference. They become this kind of lighter color like that. And the new leaves still come out very dark, very black. Look at these guys right here. Over time, it becomes this kind of darker green. It's supposed to be developing into darker green, but because of the brighter green, this is the reason why I like growing them like this, is because the brighter green against the black new leaves. Oh my gosh, it's just so beautiful. Let me show you guys my mama plant that grew in low light because that's where we're going to be cutting from. So here's a mama plant. This is what it looks like when grow in low light. I actually just moved it here in the bright greenhouse because I wanted to see what a full one would look like. And as you can see right there, the new leaf is dark black. That actually has grown in this greenhouse already. And as you can see, the older leaves are just this pure dark green. So at first glance, there's nothing special, but once you grow this in bright light with this varying colors, oh man, it's gonna look so beautiful. It probably am not capturing it properly on the video, but this is so gorgeous. Look at those colors. They're also available on the website. So if you're interested, they're right there. Okay, these ones are actually a really good one to add. This is Wayeti Laurelin, outer variegated. You see the variations outside, and when grown in bright light, it produces that really pink, oh my gosh, margin. So I think we're gonna put one of those. This is a Hoya Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost, but it is a reverted one. And although I do want to add this, look how beautiful this guy is. And although I do want to add this to my moss pole, um, this grows really fast and crazy, so I don't think it's going to be a good candidate. Isn't it pretty? Oh, wait, I have a mini Nicholsonia. They're up there. I need to grab one, so maybe this one would be a good candidate. Whoops. Oh, this is grow funky and fast, too. No, this is going to be really cute. The leaves don't get any much bigger than this, and they change color as well. So let's do this one. I almost forgot about this. This is Hoya Lachinosa Suma. This is different than your Hoya Lachinosa Variegated. This is a much more classy looking, in my opinion. They do sun stress, as you can see right there. Oh man, this one's really pretty. Look at that. Let me see if I could put Hoya Lachinosa Variegated next to it because the leaves of these are actually bigger. Here's the difference side by side. It's hard to show here. Maybe I'll just do an in-depth comparison between the two. I think Suma grows bigger leaves in my experience when grown in, in the same uh, environment because when you grow this, when you grow the regular Lachinosa Variegated in a lower environment, it's going to give you a little bit bigger leaves, probably comparable to Suma. But Suma typically is just bigger than this. Oh, another good one would be Dilobara was in circulation as Panchoya at the time. Okay, let's go up there. 
Let's go ahead and chop a little bit of these. Maybe I'll just get these two. Bing! She's pretty. Next up is this Hoya Waliniana. Look how beautiful this guy is. There's the flower. So we'll go ahead and chop a little bit of this as well. This grows pretty fast, so I don't think I'll have to put a lot in the pole. So yeah, let's chop this one. Let's chop a little bit of this Lachinosa right here. Look how freaking beautiful that is. This one doesn't grow overly fast, and I feel bad chopping it. So I think I'm just going to get probably not this one. Do I want that one? Let's see what else are options. Maybe I'll just chop this guy right here. Oh, somebody's hiding from me. Okay, definitely going to put an Afbertonia variegated there. Oh, look at this one. Really beautiful variegation. Yeah, we'll definitely chop this one. Okay, what else do- Oh, you know what? Rosita would be so freaking cute. Let's chop from here, from our wall. And let's actually give us a long vine to work with. See? Right there. Beat Patricia, hello! Oh, Rebecca's also a really good grower, so let's go ahead and chop a little bit of Rebecca. Actually, a lot of it because I like Rebecca. Let's go ahead and chop this one. All right, so there's our mama in Solaris. It's actually in bloom right now. Let me see if I can show you guys. Oh, look at that. Well, let's go ahead and chop some. Maybe right here, it's stink. And since I'm here, I actually just remembered I do want to grow, so this is Hoya Lachinosa, also known as Croniana, black, but also silver, black silver. Let's see if I could show you guys. You see how the leaves are coming out black, almost pink when grown in bright light, and then over time it hardens to silver, really pretty. Yeah, let's add this to our pole. So now that we have our cuttings, let's do a recap. So I really like this Hoya Spartioides. It doesn't grow fast and it is a little bit funky and I do a little bit of like different textures on my moss bowl. So I think this one is going to be a really good addition. I do wonder though if I should put two or just one. It doesn't really spread out to too much and if it does, it takes a really long time. So do I want to be patient? Do I just want to use one? I will just use one for now. I can always add one later. These are also self-pollinating so whenever um, maybe in the future when I have an extra seed, I'll just put it in the moss bowl and just let it grow there as a seed. Next up is this mini Hoya Nicholsonia. This one is really cute. It does grow decently fast, but not too fast. But because they're tiny, I think it'll be just fine. I also love that it does sun stress. It is a little bit long, like its inner nodes are a little bit long which is a little funky and I don't like it, but oh, we'll see. So we're going to add this too. I'm going to cut this into multiple nodes or multiple cuttings. Next up is this variety of Hoya sigillatus. This is Hoya species V as in Victor, L as in Larry, 9. So this is VL9. The reason why I chose this over GPS 7240 is because it grows much faster and just much more rewarding because it grows fast. Here's that next one is this Koya Lachinosa black long leaves. Like I said, I really like how this grows, especially when grown in bright light. So I think this is going to be a really good addition with the rest of the Hoyas that are growing. Next up, I cut this Hoya Bilobadas. This grows so freaking cute. They have these circular cute button looking leaves. And when grown in bright light, they actually produce this really cute and really beautiful dark margin. And the flowers are just as cute as the leaves. So I think these are also good uh, addition. These are also easy to care for. So far, the ones that I've chosen are very easy to care for. Keep in mind when you start grabbing your cuttings for this specific project, keep in mind of the care. Make sure that they all have about the same care so that they can all just thrive together in the moss bowl. Next one, another texture for our hole would be this Insularis. Insularis is another 
really good addition to this, I feel, just because of how unique the leaves are, as you can see right there. The flowers are very unique too. The only thing I don't like about this is how bushy, not bushy, how leggy it, it grows. But if you grow multiple nodes next to each other, then it'll bush out and I'll, I think it'll look good. So let's go ahead and try this one. If it's not bushy enough for me, maybe I'll just grab more cuttings and just put more into the moss pole. That's the good thing about the medium that I'm using is that where we grow these plants permanently is also where we propagate. So I can just stick some more cuttings in the moss pole later on because of the medium that I'm using without having to worry about oh, I have to slow down in watering or increase watering or anything like that. So this is really cute. It does become red too, or maroon. The leaves get a little bit darker and red-ish whenever grown in bright light. So I think this is gonna be really cute. Of course, I have to add one of these. These turn into kind of like pink when sun stressed. So I think this is gonna be, this is gonna provide some really beautiful color in the moss fall as well. This one, slow grower. This is a Lachinosa red. And hopefully this grows well. Next up is Hoya Lachinosa Suma. Like I said, this is a really beautiful of Lachinosa. I love how this guy grows. Oops. And it also turns a bit pink on the leaves when sun stressed. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. One of the reasons why I didn't do the variegated Lachinosa is because it's very similar to this one. And if I were to choose between the two, I think I'd like to put this on the moss pole over the other one because it grows a little bit faster and who doesn't like instant gratification. This one is a favorite. So this is a Hoya Lachinosa Black or also known as Croniana Black. When it grows, it does grow like those dark beautiful black leaves and then it hardens to dark green and it is silver so this is that silver variety i haven't really tried growing this in bright light so i don't know how it's going to be but the ones that are sun stressed are kind of sun stressed and the shaded greenhouse is looking really cute and really pink so i'm really helpful so we'll go ahead and add one of these next up you guys know how much I love my margins. This is a really beautiful cutting of Koya Rosita. Rosita is one of my favorites for that reason. Not only that it sun stresses, it's also very easy to care for and it gets dark. And last but not the least is Hoya Rebecca. We may have gotten such a big cutting, so we'll break this apart as well, but not too, too much. Yeah, these are all the cuttings. Let's get started. So this is my moss pole. And if you have the exact same one, let me just show you guys how I put it together. To find out which one is the front and which one is the back, you're gonna wanna look for this line that separates the area where you're gonna be planting your cuttings and what holds it in the back. So you're gonna see, whoop, you're gonna see this line right here and you're gonna run your finger through it. You're gonna find the one that is not smooth. So this is smooth, so that means this one is where it folds. Oh my gosh. This one, this is the area where it folds because it is scored on this side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold like this. There you go. I fold it completely like that. And I do the same thing on this side. And what I love about these moss poles is that you can configure what size or how big you want the moss pole to be diameter wise because you have these three openings right here, one, two, three, actually four, where you can just choose where you want to lock this. And depending on where you lock it, you'll have more space. So you see how if I lock it all the way to the smallest one, then this is the only space that I'm going to have for my medium. And then if I do it on the biggest size, then I'm gonna have this much space in the medium. And this is also the reason why I really like these moss holes is that later on when my cuttings become very well rooted and root bound right here, I can just open this up and then just keep extending. And when I open it up, I can just add more medium right here and I can just keep opening it until I can add more until I cannot anymore. And I actually absolutely have to pop them up. With this one, I would like to start with the smallest size because they don't really need a lot of 
moisture right now since they're all just gonna be, or at least most of them are just gonna be cutting. So the very first la layer that I want to put right here is moss because that's what I want to show in front of my mouth ball. Should have wet this moss first. So then we're going to put our mix right here, which is Coco Core Coco Husk Mix. Now, this is all optional. You can put slow release fertilizer here during this stage, but I like to control how much fertilizer or when to fertilize my plants when it's when sun stressing them. I'm not going to put any on mine. Especially when you're trying to sun stress your plants, when you give them too much fertilizer, you're not gonna see much of a change because they're just gonna be way too healthy. So yeah, I'm just gonna close this up like a burrito and I'll be back. Okay, so let me just show you guys. So I ended up using the second area because I packed it a little too much. How you see how I lock it? I locked it this way and there's that divot right there and it just locks in place like that so that it doesn't easily open now here's going to be your problem right you're going to have these openings right here i'm not really going to worry about that yet for now because i'm going to be growing my cuttings this way i'm not going to put it up yet so we'll go ahead and figure that out later if you want to know how i do that later on make sure to follow me on instagram because i will make sure to post that over there.